Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can set up very simple and easy to do movement for a 2D character inside of the Unity engine. So this is going to use a combination of the newer input system, which will install through the package manager, and a rigid body set to dynamic mode. So first off, in order to get the import where you can draw your movement direction from, go up to window in your new project, go to package manager, and then change from in project if it's set to that to unity registry now you can search for input system and down here at the bottom right you can click on install so when you install this it'll give you a little warning that mentions that this completely overrides the default unity input system so if you're not okay with that it's probably better to test in a new project first before you mess with your old game so if you're not sure if you want to try the new system, you should probably test in a new project first. So once you have that installed and Unity will automatically reopen, then you can search for a component on the character that you want to add the player input to. So click on add component and do player input. So this will only show up if you have the input system installed. So I'll go ahead and revert this component now that we need it. So when you open up player input, there'll be this little notice where you need to have a import action for anything to happen. So you can click on create actions and save a import actions file anyway in your project. As you can see in my project window, I have a gather player import action set here. So this file contains all of the links between a input device like a keyboard or a 360 controller and the actual event that it's going to trigger in the game. So clicking on gather a player, when we assign the actions asset here, so I'll choose my gather player, then you can double click on it to open up the actions window. So you can create your own actions, but the default are move, look, and fire. When you expand these, you'll see that each action already has different input devices set up. So to trigger a move in the game, you can either use a gamepad with a left stick, or you can use WASD. If we expand this, you'll see there's a up for W and an up for uh, up arrow on the keyboard and you can just delete whichever options you don't want to allow if any and you can see the action over here so what type are you going to get a value and then the control here is going to in this case be the x y values for the movement so we have to get the vector to from the value in our script so now we would just create a new player script so i'll just go ahead and open this up and you'll see it can be pretty simple really so first off i have a variable set up here for the movement speed this is just an arbitrary number to control how fast you want your player to move if you make this public then you can set it in the inspector without editing the script directly so next we have the movement input so this is actually being set down here in this function on move so if we look at the player input with the gatherer player actions set in here you'll see we'll send message to game object on these different events so one of those is on move so whenever you want to respond to one of these events you just create a method with the same name so that's why it's on move here and you use input value this comes out of unity engine dot input system so if you just type in import value in your editor it'll probably say you need to add this namespace up here so the input value here has a vector 2 attached to it that's the xy input so if you pressed a on your keyboard for instance that would be trying to move to the left. That would be a value of negative one for the X component of that vector. So anyway, you get your movement import from this value. You don't really need to worry too much about the details. And then we use that in combination with the move speed to move the rigid body. So to move the rigid body, you have to get reference to it. So here we have rigid body 2D. We get the rigid body 2D from the game object when the script starts. So basically, if there's a rigid body component on the game object, which you can see right here that there's not, we'll add that back in a second, then it's going to get that. And then we can use that in the script. So then all we need to do is set the velocity of that rigid body if it's in dynamic mode, and we'll be able to move the player around the screen. So to get the velocity, we just need a direction times a movement value. You don't need to worry about time delta time here because uh, the rigid body will already take that into consideration. So you can just do the movement input times the movement speed. So hopefully that explains the gist of how all this works. It's pretty simple, but if you want a direct copy of the script, I'll have a link to my Patreon down below. Now, uh, back on the game object, we need to add in the rigid body component and some kind of collider component. So you would just click add component and search for those. I'm going to revert them. 
to the state they were before. So on the rigid body, you want it set to dynamic mode. Uh, this will basically allow the physics engine to calculate all of the movements for your character. For a 2D top-down game like this, you want to go into constraints and freeze the rotation so that when you're moving left and right, your character doesn't spin around randomly. Also, when you set up a collider, you're going to want to edit the collider so that it is roughly at the character's feet. It doesn't make sense for the head to block the character from moving around the screen. And I can show why really quickly just by hitting play. Let's look at uh, the basic movement. If the collider went all the way up to the person's head, it would be colliding with this water right here in the background because the water has a tile map collider. Just think of it as a square. So this head is definitely going into that collider, but the collider on the player is down here. So that's how you get the player to stop moving when its feet reaches it, not when the head does. And then down here at the bottom, you can see the feet are colliding down here. If you needed to go a few pixels more, you can just go out of play mode, edit your collider again, which I probably will do here. Maybe move that up and down here to there, go into play mode, and then that can be a much better shape. Feel free to try other types of colliders. So I could uh, remove this component and then add a box collider 2D, edit it, and then we'll click over here to bring the shape down to right about here. Go into play mode, and with a box collider, it'll still work okay, but it might not slide along the edges as well as you might like. So that would be one reason for using a capsule or a circle collider instead. So you can see with a capsule collider, don't really have that issue, can slide along the edges just fine. And in case you're wondering about what the player is actually colliding with over here, if you create a 2D tile map by doing right click 2D object tile map rectangular, then you can click on one of the tile maps, like here I have the water, attach a tile map collider 2D to it. And that will make it so that every tile you draw on this map that is on this layer is going to have a collider shape. So that's all you actually have to do to get your tile map to be a collision layer. And then when you don't want collisions, you just don't add a tile map collider and you draw different tiles on those squares like the ground over here. So it's really quite straightforward. And that's pretty much in a nutshell how to do just about the easiest 2D movement for your top-down games inside of Unity 2022 using the relatively new import system from the package manager. So I've been Chris. I hope this was useful for all of you out there. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in my future video content.